this is the Marshall Enterprises presentation. Gotta give me a minute. This is my dark chocolate. Excuse me for talking my mouth for. <laughs> Never mind the background noises. Peace, everybody, and welcome back. I know you've been looking for me, and I've been uh, in the books, in the books, and studying. And I have some information that I need to bring forth. So get your pads, pens, paper, get ready. I'm about to bring it. Now let me vent for a minute. For a little over five years, I've been dealing with a discomfort and this discomfort is located on my left side, right below my rib cage. And I've gone to three doctors, three medical doctors, and I've given them my symptoms. I've given them my story of what happens, what's going on. You know, you can sleep on your left side, but it hurts when you sleep on the right side, et cetera, et cetera. They went from gas to I can't even remember the little bullshit they kept telling me. Or it could be gas, it could be this, it could be that. So we're gonna skip to the chase. Because of my ability to go to any doctor, whether it be a specialist or what have you, in network, out of network, I chose to go to a urologist. Go to a urologist and I'm telling the urologist of my symptoms and my dealings and you know I'm not in pain it's just a discomfort and I keep saying I use this description often it feels as though you had surgery and they may have left a glove in there by accident you know what I mean they close you up and there's still a glove in there that they miss so it's it doesn't hurt it's just a discomfort they're like something's going on so I requested an MRI or a CAT scan, whatever them things are called. And they agreed, let me go get a, you know, they, they signed off on it. I went and I got, it wasn't a CAT scan and it wasn't an MRI, it's in between one of those, whatever. I've seen a radiologist. So the radiologist does what he does and provides me with a disc that I needed to you know, take to my doctor. One thing led to another, I got busy, and I didn't bring the disc back to the doctor right away. But the doctor, I'm told, gets a copy, like they automatically send him a file. So maybe a month passed that I have not gone back to the doctor. I decided to put the disc inside my computer and let me see if I can read it. And I can. It just, images, uh, it's like, uh, what do you call it, like a sonogram? It's a sonogram image, but it's more of a 3D image of the areas in which they scan. So I don't know what the hell I'm looking at when you look at the scans and the images, but you can read the report from the radiologist. And the radiologist reports, oh, diverticulitis in the lower sigmoid colon. I'll go type that in. Hell is that? Okay, diverticulitis is small pouches that form inside the, the lower col or the, the 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 colon, and these pouches form. Now, this is not what the report says. My research 
gives me the further information of what diverticulitis is. Now, there's two types of problems here. You got diverticulosis and diverticulitis, what I have, diverticulitis. Diverticulosis can lead to cancer. Diverticulitis is like a, a nuisance. It, you know, it can be painful if you let it flare up, if you eat the wrong foods, you know, foods can get trapped inside those little pockets that form, get in, get um, inflamed and really irritate. So you have to watch what you eat when you have diverticulitis as well as diverticulosis. However, the report said diverticulitis and also um, fatty liver. Now, I do consume alcohol. I do not consume large amounts of alcohol. So fatty liver can come from alcohol, uh, alcohol consumption, or it can come from your diet. I'm leaning more on the diet because I do eat a lot of candy. And in this extensive research that I've done, that is my main culprit the main culprit of my fatty liver. There are, I ain't gonna say there's candies I shouldn't be eating, you know, sugar. It's the sugar. And maybe in another video, I'll go into detail of how the body breaks it down, what the body does with it, and why the liver builds up the fat. A little something I learned that I'm gonna pass to you. So, When I finally went back to the urologist and we're discussing the results of this scan, whether it was an MRI or CAT scan, one of those scans, he tells me, oh yeah, okay, diverticulitis. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And he goes, oh yeah, you also um, the fatty liver. So what I said was, I am taking care of the fatty liver on my own. I'm taking milk thistle and I'm doing other things to address it. And he, you know, it's like, oh, okay, okay. The man never once said, with diverticulitis, you should do this. You might want to avoid this. Or give any type, any, any type of advice or solution. Hell, he didn't even prescribe medication. Fatty liver never prescribed any medication or prescribed a routine or something to do. So this leads me to you. What the hell is your doctor doing? You go to the doctor and they run urinology or urine, urinalysis, I'm gonna say urinalysis, I don't wanna be too technical. They take your piss test, they, you know, you pee in a cup, give it to them, goes to a lab. They take your blood, goes to a lab. Those results the doctors get, and it tells you your numbers, whether it be your cholesterol is too high or too low, whether it be your, um, there's blood in your urine, if there is too much sugar in your urine, because you can tell if you have diabetes through these tests, because if your urine is too sweet, if your urine has too much, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't need to look for it. You know what the hell I'm saying. They can figure out these things and they can warn you or they can advise you. So my doctor, I'm sorry, that man, <laughs> my doctor, that man never advised me of what to do, what not to do, and so on and so forth. He just gave me the information that I already knew because I read the damn thing myself. Now, me being the person that do not take medications or I try to stay away from it. When I was dealing with bad sinus issues, when it gets really, when the headaches really, really get pounding and that pressure is right here, I'll go take a Sudafed or I would take Claritin and you would get relative short relief, but I'm not one to band-aid. I don't want to band-aid it. I don't want to kick the can down the road. I want to take care. What is the issue? What's going on? Let's address it. 
So in doing my own research of diverticulitis, I came across a few herbs. Why didn't I find these herbs five years ago? So five years, I've been dealing with diverticulitis and pretty much letting an injury persist instead of remedying it before. You should be drinking a lot of water. And what you should add to your water is slippery elm. Look at that herb. I'm going to put it here. But slippery elm is a very, very, very helpful herb to soothe and coat the colon. Slippery elm helps other things. Now, you're looking at a bottle of water with slippery elm in it. So somebody say, that's not what I put the herb in the bottle. <laughs> There's some slow people I got to do that for. So, and it's a, it's a, a three quarters of a teaspoon of slippery elm in 500 milliliters. Yes, 500 milliliters, 16 ounces. So three quarters of a teaspoon of slippery elm in each bottle of water you drink. It has a nutty smell, a nutty taste. It, it doesn't. It's, it's, it doesn't taste bad, but it definitely will help with your diverticulitis. Something else I've done. A poultice. You would take a cotton cloth. You would take some castor oil. You would saturate this thing. Saturate it, saturate it, saturate it. Now, let me tell you another step before we go here, because it's very important. You would need to get a piece of plastic, like saran wrap, not a Ziploc bag, a piece of plastic like saran wrap. And you would put the saran wrap here and put the cloth on top of it and leave extra room around it, in which I'll do a video on it. I'll do a video. So you got the plastic under the cloth, the cloth and you got castor oil on the cloth. You let it saturate. You will then apply that on your side and wrap plastic or scarf, whatever you want to, to hold it in place. It's better to use plastic so you don't get it all over your bed, all over the sheets, blankets. And it's advised to leave it on for a couple hours, three to eight hours, sleep with it, sleep with it overnight, and do it for at least a week or longer, depending on the extent of your condition. I've been dealing with it for five years. So I was going to do a three-day on, three-day off regimen. I like my threes. So I did it three days straight. I'm going to let the body do what it does for three days. And I'm going to go back and do another three days. And let the body rest and do another three days. Now, each time you use it, you don't have to go and wash the cloth and get rid of no. You add a little bit more of the castor oil and you apply it again. When you take it off, hold it over, leave it there so it's not making a mess anywhere, and get it again and apply it again. Three days. Or you can do it every day, depending on your situation, how you do it. Castor oil has extremely beneficial properties of which Look it up. Don't believe me. I'm bringing this information to you. What you do with it is on you. Or you can listen to your doctor who's telling you nothing. Or you can listen to your doctor who'll tell you, oh, take two aspirin and call me in the morning. Something else that I've 
looked up, looked into, is a colon tea. There are several herbs that are very beneficial to the colon. What are those herbs? Licorice root. Cascara sagranda. Buckthorn bark. This wasn't part of the group, but I added it anyway. Sorry, gentian. Gentian. Now, I'm going to give you the formula because you have to make a concoction. What you're going to do is you're going to add parts of each into a jar. You're going to mix it up really, really raw, really, really, really raw. And you're just going to take one teaspoon or a tablespoon, preferably a teaspoon. Some people will take a tablespoon. Take a teaspoon, put it inside a, you want to diffuse it. You don't want to just put this in a cup, pour the hot water on it and drink it. You want to diffuse it, You like steep it. You should have some kind of steeping equipment. I should pause here and show you what I have. That's, you should steep it. And this is like a little egg, a little metal egg that opens up and you put the herbs inside and you stir it in some hot water and you let it sit in hot water for about four minutes, four to five minutes. And you drink the entire cup. I have to tell you it's extremely bitter and to some, they'll say it's downright nasty. This ain't for you in your lips or your tongue or your taste. It is for your colon. And your colon needs what it needs. And you either provide it or you don't. You either deal with your illness, Ill, your, 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 your problems, or you take care of it. Because not everything that is sweet is good for you. There's a term, you know, sweet on the lips or bitter to the lips, sweet to the liver. That could go for either almost any part of your body. Bitter on the lips, sweet for your intestines. Bitter on your lips, sweet for your kidneys. What you think is good got you into the mess that you're in right now. Those collard greens, those that fried chicken, that that waffle, that all that starch. All that crap that you ate that was good is doing a hell of a job to your body. So you want to get the bitters. The bitter, the better. It's my little fancy teapot with the little. So I would put the herbs inside my little steeper. And I would put it inside the teapot. Water, close it up. And that's how I would do mine. So. These items will be for sale in a couple of months on my new website. What is my new website, which I really not supposed to be talking about right now, because I'm still putting it together. Nature provides the answer, but that's what I'm gonna say for now. We'll talk about that other time. <laughs> nature provides the answer. No matter the question, nature provides the answer. So anyway, we'll deal with that another time. You're gonna, Take one part of the cascara, cascara sagrana. You're going to take, let's say, one tablespoon, one tablespoon of the cascara sagrana. Put it inside your jar. Next up is your licorice root. You're going to take two tablespoons of the licorice root. Put it inside your jar. You're gonna take three tablespoons of the buckthorn bark. Put it inside your jar. And I put a small, I think it was a half a teaspoon of the gentian. Herbologist at the uh, place that I got the herbs from told me how potent this is and how little you need of it. So, 
when you say one part, two part, three parts of the other stuff, this is so concentrated, you don't need as much as you need of the others. So you're gonna put all your ingredients inside a jar or you can put it in a bowl and mix it up. Hell, you wanna put it inside a bullet, magic bullet and chop it all up, do what you do. The problem is if you make it too fine, where it's now gonna seep through the holes, you're gonna have a, a gritty tea. It's gonna be a little worse than, keep it as, as, as clump. <laughs> can't find a description. Keep it as solid as you can, with the exception to the powder you're going to use here. Keep it as solid as you can. Just, just toss it, shake it, flip it around, take the spoon in. Now you're just going to take one tablespoon or you're going to take one teaspoon, either or, depending on your taste, and you're going to put it in your steeper, one cup of hot water, drink that. I said I was going to be bold. I'm going to do it three times a day. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, you're barely going to get that one glass down. But then again, your taste may be different. You may be able to do two or three. This is excellent, excellent, excellent for your colon. Excellent. Soothes, repairs, heals. It's a colon tea. All right. I think that's all I have for you at this particular moment because. There's other topics I want to bring up. This one was speaking particularly about diverticulitis and the issues that you may be facing that your doctor may not be telling you about. So your next visit to your doctor's office, request, you know, workup. Re request a workup. You want a, a full workup. You want blood tests. You want urine tests. And you want to sit down and go over them with your doctor. You want to find out what your cholesterol levels are. You want to find out what your liver points are. You want to find out, you know, your your um, your status with respect to diabetes. How's your kidneys performing and different things? Because if you don't take an active role in your health, don't be mad because someone else is not taking an active role in your health. There's no money in the cure. And you went to them. You went to them. So you go to them and you tell them, okay, this is my issue. I want something done about it. But if you just show up at the doc, oh, I got a headache. Oh, my, my, this hurt, you know. And you're not, Adam, you got to be on these doctors. A lot of these doctors are practicing. You ever heard of a doctor's practice? They're practicing. They don't know. And when you go to them with an issue, oh, um, I have this symptom, I have this ailment, this is going on, what they're going to do is they're going to listen to what you tell them, and they're going to go and they're going to investigate what it could be. They don't know unless they send you for tests and the tests reveal, oh, yeah, your liver levels is low, your kidneys is not functioning properly. And, you know, unless these tests reveal some things that the naked eye can't see. Oftentimes, if your eyes are bloodshot, you can tell something's going on. When, you know, when you go to the doctor, what do they do first? They look in your eyes. They say, stick out your tongue. These are the first signs of something going on, something going wrong. They take your, your blood pressure. They take your temperature. So these are the first signs of something that's going on. And once these things don't tell you, tell me what's going on, you need to take it to the next step. So you can look at your own eyes. Are, you, are they white? Are they red and bloodshot? Are you having headaches? Do you feel a little uneasy, like a little woozy, discombobulated? My, my uh, science teacher in the fifth grade, Dr. Berman, Intermediate School 53, Far Rockaway, Queens. Dr. Berman, if you, he wouldn't recognize me today, but amazing, amazing science teacher. One of the things he said stuck with me is when you walk, you should not feel your body. When you walk, you should not feel your body. Every step you take is supposed to be a fluid motion. But if you walk and you feel your stomach, if you walk and you feel your back hurt, 
something's going on. You got to get to the root of it, figure out what's going on, correct it. Your body, if given the right things, can heal itself, can repair itself. But that's another conversation for another time. This is talking about diverticulitis and the colon. Things that you can do to help your body repair itself. Because nature provides the answer. Whatever the question. What's your question? What's your issue? That's it for now. This is Bud Brownsville. Thank you for watching. And stay tuned. I got a lot coming up for you guys.